finding products of polynomials. During this lesson, we're going to go from a conceptual explanation all the way to effective methods of multiplying polynomials. As we proceed through the examples, I encourage you to stop the lesson and try to work ahead and then play on to see if you came up with a correct solution. You will learn better that way. The practice of multiplying polynomials together was used by the ancient Egyptians to calculate land area for taxing and productivity purposes. And conceptually, even today in the 21st century, multiplying two numbers or expressions together is, I think, the best way to understand what is going on when finding products. So that's how we'll be doing it in this lesson. Here we have a tabletop whose dimensions are a length of 4 and 1 half feet and a width of 3 feet. The formula for finding this or the area of any rectangle is the equation A equals LW, where A is the area, L is the length, and W is the width. While the numbers are simple enough here that a lot of us could solve it in our own minds, it's even easier if we break it down to be 3 times 4 plus 3 times 1 half feet. This breaks down to 12 feet plus 1 half feet, or 13 and a half feet squared. This breaking an area calculation into parts in this simple problem, two parts, is essentially what I think is the best way to learn and understand finding the products of polynomials. The separation of the problem into two parts is a demonstration of the use of the distributive property of algebra. In order to help students grasp the fundamentals of algebra, algebra tiles were invented. Algebra tiles give a physical representation of the units used in algebra. For the tiles format we'll be using in this lesson, the number one is represented by a small square yellow tile. Red square tiles are used to represent negative one. Green rectangular tiles represent x's. Red rectangular tiles represent negative x's, big blue squares represent x squareds, and big red squares represent negative x squareds. The first problem we'll look at is this one, 3 times quantity 2x minus 6. When I say quantity 2x minus 6, I use the word quantity as a verbal cue that what I say next after quantity will be written within parentheses. So 2x minus 6 is inside parentheses. We first set up a bracket or frame we will use to multiply our algebra tiles. We line up three little yellow squares representing the number three here on the left side. Now we line up the factor on the right side first by placing two x's here at the top of the bracket. Next we place six little red squares to represent minus six right next to the two x's. Now we find the product. We take three times two x which is six x and fill in the answer to that calculation here with six green rectangles. We see the area set aside for that calculation filled in by the six green rectangles representing six x's. We don't have all the area filled in to have our complete answer, so next we take the product of three and negative six, which is negative eighteen, and place all the squares to fill in our algebra tile representation of the product. And so our product is the expression six x minus eighteen. I hope you were able to see that by using algebra tiles we have done essentially the same thing we did earlier when we calculated the area of the tabletop by breaking it into two parts. In our first problem using algebra tiles, we multiplied a monomial 3 by a binomial 2x minus 6. In this problem, we'll find the product of two binomials using algebra tiles, and that would be quantity x minus 1 times quantity x plus 6. We place our brackets so we can have a framework to multiply. We first place the binomial x minus 1 to one side of the bracket, the left side, and then we take the binomial x plus 6 and place it here at the top of the bracket. In the upper left corner, we calculate the product of x and x, which is x squared, and place it here. Next, we find the product of x and 6, which is 6x, and place it in the upper right portion of the area with 6 green rectangles. Next, we take the product of x and negative 1, which is negative 1x, or negative x, and place the rectangular red tile here. And then, to completely fill in the rectangle, we find the product of negative 1 and 6, which is negative 6, and place it here, 6 little square red tiles. Finally, we notice that we have the like terms 6x and minus x. We cross through one, the one negative x, the red rectangle, and one of the positive x's, one green rectangle, to cancel out the negative x. And that leaves us with x squared plus 5x minus 6 as our simplified answer. Now we will look at our next problem, quantity 2n plus 3 times quantity n minus 5. We put our multiplication bracket in place. Here on the left, we place 2x plus 3. We use x instead of n, of course. And on top, we place x minus 5. 
As a product of 2x and x, we place 2x squareds here, which we write below as 2n squared. Next, we place the product of negative 5 and 2x, which is negative 10x here, which we write as negative 10n. Then we place the product of 3 and x, which is 3x here, which we write as 3n. And then to completely fill in the rectangle, we place the product of 3 and negative 5, which is negative 15, here in the lower right of the rectangle. We have some negative x's and some positive x's, so these three x's here in the green are canceled by these three negative red x's here. So we end up with 2n squared minus 7n minus 15. With this problem, I will introduce a similar method, but one that is a step up abstractly from using algebra tiles. It's easier to use because it doesn't use algebra tiles, but builds from the same concept. And it's called using the box method to find products of polynomials. The first thing to do is construct a box like this one. The types of polynomials we have determine how many sections the box is divided into or separated into. A binomial times a binomial requires a box like this one separated into four parts. The n and the minus n go here at the top of the box, the n on the left side, and the negative 5 on the right side. And on the left side, we place the term 2n above and 3 below. In the upper left box, we place the product of 2n and n, and that is 2n squared. In the next box, we place the product of negative 5 and 2n, and that product is negative 10n. In the lower left box, we place the product of 3n and n, and that is 3n. I think it's a good idea to put a, in a plus sign to remind us that it's positive. And the lower right corner is the product of 3 and negative 5, and that is negative 15. We then take the two x terms, positive 3n and negative 10n, so they become together negative 7n. And now we can determine our answer, 2n squared minus 7n minus 15, the same answer we got earlier using algebra tiles. Now for this problem, negative 2 times quantity x minus 2 times quantity x minus 1. This problem has another complication. In addition to the two binomials, it also has this monomial, negative 2, in front of the expression. We're going to supply the negative 2 from the outside times the x and the negative 2 of the first binomial. So we now have quantity negative 2x plus 4 times quantity x minus 1. We place our bracket to use algebra tiles. We put negative 2x here at the top left, and then we place four ones to represent four here below. On top, we place one x here, and then negative one next to it here. In the upper left corner, we place the product of negative 2x and x, which is negative 2x squared. In the lower left corner, we place the product of four and x, which is four x. In the upper right corner, we have negative 2x times negative 1, which is positive 2x. And to complete the rectangle, we have the product of 4 and negative 1, which is negative 4. And since there are no x terms to cancel, we had negative 2x squared, and then these 6x's represented by the 6 green rectangles, and finally, minus 4. My son Joseph, sometimes called G-Dog Jr., asked to do a problem on the smart board, and this happened to be the one I gave him. And this is how he did it, using the box method. First he took the quantity x minus 2 times quantity x minus 1 and worked it out in the first box. Then he took his answer, x squared minus 3x plus 2, and multiplied it by the negative 2 here using the box method a second time. And we see that he got the same answer that we did earlier. And now we'll look at our final problem, quantity x squared plus 3x minus 2 times quantity x minus 5. And for this one, I'll give you multiple choice options. I invite you to stop the video and try to solve this problem, then restart to see how you did. And for this one, we have as our first term of our answer x cubed, since x squared times x is x cubed. And since we don't have algebra tiles for x cubed, we'll go straight to the box method. Since it's a trinomial times a binomial, we'll need to make it a 2 by 3 box. That's one of the great things about the box method as opposed to FOIL and some other methods. It has the flexibility to be used with any number of terms. At the top, we place our trinomial x squared plus 3x minus 2, each term at the top of each column. And at the side here, we place the two terms of our binomial x minus 5. 
Here in the upper left box, we place the product of x and x squared, and that product is x cubed, or x to the third power. In the next box, we place the product of x and 3x, and that is 3x squared. In the upper right box, we place the product of x and negative 2, and that is negative 2x. In the lower left box, we find the product of negative 5 and x squared, and that is negative 5x squared. In the next box, we find the product of negative 5 and 3x, and that product is negative 15x. In the lower right box, we find the product of negative 5 and negative 2, and that product is positive 10. The next step is to recognize if we have any like terms. We have our x squareds here, negative 5x squared and 3x squared, and we have our x's here, negative 15x and negative 2x. We bring down x cubed, and the next thing we do is bring down the x squareds and negative 5x squared plus 3x squared is negative 2x squared. Then we bring down the x's and negative 15x plus negative 2x is negative 17x. And at the last we bring down our final term plus 10. So it looks like our correct answer is C. I want to do one more thing with this problem that is to verify that our solution is correct. If we have a graphing calculator it's easy to do. What we'll do is store a value for x I'm going to press 0.7, then storage, that's the STO key above the on key here shown in the calculator, then press enter. Then we enter the original expression as shown in the problem, then press enter. Next we enter the answer we want to check, answer C. We enter x to the third by pressing the rooftop or caret key right under the clear key. Press enter. We see that the values of the expressions are the same, negative 2.537 demonstrating that C is the correct answer. Check. We've covered a lot in this lesson. We went over a little history, then worked on conceptual understanding. We applied the distributive property of algebra using the particular techniques of algebra tiles and the box method. And we briefly went over how to use the graphing calculator to check your work. Because of having covered so much so quickly, more practice is recommended and needed for proficiency in this skill. This has been Finding the Products of Polynomials. Thanks for viewing.